Get us set on. There we go. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'll um, call the meeting to order uh, the Municipal Planning Commission meeting. Uh, what we'll start off with uh, first off is we'll do some introductions and I'll um, start with myself, uh, James Niver, going to chair of the Municipal Planning Commission. And I'll go this way. Russ Dilbert, board member. Justin Stevens, board member. Dave Grover is on the phone. So. You're muted right now, Dave, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. We'll move on. Go ahead, Paul. Paul McKay, you know, Red Wolf. Bernie Gender, board member. Larry Clark, board member. Andrew Richard, director of municipal services. Greg Teal, Director of Park Lincoln Planning Services. We're going back here. Rich Fitzgerald, Development Officer. Ross Planner with PCS. Right back there. Perfect. Thank you, everybody, and welcome. Um, next up is agenda additions and approval. Are there any any ag agenda additions that you have? Is there any from the board members that have any? Seeing none, I'll get a motion. Mr. Stilbert? I'll move the agenda be approved as presented. Uh, any questions, concerns? Seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor? Uh, is carried. I'm going to go with Mr. Grover's. There we go. Yes. I'm going with him as approved, so unless he says otherwise. Um, minute approval from October 27th, regular county MPC meeting. It was distributed to everybody. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Seeing none, I'll get a motion. Paul? There you go. Board member McKay. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay. Um, so we do have a number of individuals here and online. So um, can we, um, how did, how's everybody feel about doing this a little bit differently? And we'll go straight to development uh, permits. And um, we can start with, who do we all have here? I think we have everyone except 6.1 under development permits, and we have 7.1 as well. Okay. So if we just skip 6.1 and follow the rest of the order for the day, then sure. Let's do that. We'll go right to 6.2. Is that all right with the uh, staff? Yes. You're ready to take On it? virtually. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the applicant is proposing to install two recreational vehicles, a 2007 Dutchman bumper pull trailer and a 2002 motorhome for use as seasonal dwelling units on Lot 1, Lot 1 Plan 0724824. County's Land Use Bylaw provides the following. Section 92.3 stipulates that the use of a recreational vehicle at a dwelling unit on a parcel of land less than 80 acres is a discretionary use in the Agricultural Land Use District. Section 76.2 of the bylaw states on any lot developed or vacant in any land use district, a maximum of two RVs may be used as a dwelling unit for a period not exceeding 21 consecutive days upon issuance of a temporary development permit. Further, the use of a recreational vehicle as a dwelling unit for a period exceeding 21 consecutive days is allowed only if a recreational vehicle is listed at a use in the land use district and a development permit has been issued by the development authority pursuant to the regulations of that district. The land use bylaw does not specify the number of recreational vehicles that may be accommodated on a 9.96 maximum acre parcel of land for private recreational purposes. However, the bylaw provides for a maximum of 20 RV units or stalls for an area of maximum five acres, whichever is less, for a public use recreational vehicle park and or campground within the agricultural land use district. Section 76.4A of the land use bylaw stipulates recreational vehicles shall be no more than 15 years at the time of applying for development permit to use it as a dwelling unit. 
If the RV is older than 15 years, photos of the exterior must be submitted with the development permit application. The applicant has provided the attached photos of the 2002 motorhome. Section 69.1 of the bylaw provides for additional dwelling units within a land use district in which a second or additional dwelling or a manufactured home is listed as a permitted or discretionary use. A second dwelling on a parcel of land less than 80 acres is listed as a discretionary use in the agricultural land use district. Section 69.2 of the bylaw states the additional dwelling unit must be located within and forms part of an existing yard site, shares the same access and where practical, the same water supply system and or sewage disposal system and or other utilities as those used for the principal dwelling. The construction of a 575 square foot multi-purpose building, a kitchen and bathroom facilities with a 16 by 16 attached deck and a 288 square foot ancillary building and two detached ancillary build buildings, Son and Biffy, are also proposed to be located on the subject property. The aforementioned improvements are permitted uses pursuant to section 92.2 of the land use bylaw. I mentioned are the applicant is with us, uh, I assume. So if you have any questions, uh, and, and is it uh, Jennifer that's with us? And Eddie. And hey, Eddie? Okay. Um, would either of you like to speak to this? Go ahead, Eddie. Oh, we can't hear you. We got them off mute, or how? Yeah, they're un they're both unmuted. Uh, okay. Jennifer, can you hear us and speak to us? I love technology in this day of Zooming. I'm going to go to the board members. Are there any questions, concerns that we have here? The area board member would like to make a motion. Uh, I'll move that we accept it as long as everything is as discretionary use. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, question. Noticed in the map, there was a, looked like another subdivided property just on the south side of the road. Is that correct? Is there a, there is. what is there? Um, is there it's a, vacant. Uh, there. I know I, we did, uh, didn't see any dwelling when we were there. I'm also proposing to relocate the approach. The approach is currently at the top of the, you're looking at the map, just across from that parcel. It's right at the top of all you can actually see where there's some bad traffic in that site. And it's in a poor location with regards to line of sight. So they are going to move it to the bottom of the hill where their line of sight is uh, much better. So they're moving it east or west? East. east. Okay. Mr. Fitzgerald. That uh, directly south of the location there is a historical site. There's an old school there. Okay. Wood Hill or something, I think it was. Pilot Knob. Pilot It's it's an old school house anyways. It's not a it's not a residential dwelling. Pilot Knob is it on But that's okay. It's not a historical site. That's more information than we need. Okay. Um and I'm going to try again for Eddie or Jennifer if they're if you can hear us and if you can I feel like I'm running a seance sometimes. Can I hear you? Get in, get in, chat. It doesn't seem like it's like speak. Okay. And is there any comment in chat? Mute them. Have me mute it. Okay, what was that, Dave? I think we had him muted, but. Yeah, so we had muted. Were everybody done? Muted? Done. Mine was muted and I couldn't change it. Then, yeah, that 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 setting. Was Are you unmuted? Muted. Yeah, everyone's unmuted, but uh, okay. their audio doesn't seem to be coming through, anyways. Okay. Um, unfortunately, technology doesn't allow us this, but um, 
Any questions or concerns? Go ahead, Mr. It's just uh, I wish we could talk to them because when you look at the like the Biffy with the septic tank and it, it, are they tying the trailers into that also? And is it is is it, is it permanent? Okay, go ahead. Jacinta, can you answer that question for us, possibly? Yes, the intent was to put a holding tank, larger holding tank, for use for the recreational vehicles. They're also proposing a, um, the Biffy for an outdoor with a shower as well. So just ancillary buildings to be used uh, obviously during this season. It would all be hauled out. It would all be hauled out. It would be all, yes, a holding tank, a contained tank. And, and just for the record, there is no stipulation that we have to let any anybody speak. We do that as a courtesy, so we've yeah. always done that. Try to continue to do that, but unfortunately, we just don't have the technology today. So. Okay. Um, any other questions or concerns? I'm seeing none. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Mr. Grover. Uh, hey, I guess I'm in favor. Okay. Thank you for that. Moving on, so, uh, and um, in order, so we'll go 6.3, I guess, is the next one. Uh, go ahead, page 62 of your package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the applicant is proposing to operate an agricultural, uh, a swine operation on a 5.24 acre parcel within the country resident agricultural district. Section 96.3 of the bylaw provides for an agricultural operation, keeping off livestock as a discretionary use in the CR district, subject to the quantity and designated area identified in the bylaw. Section 96.10b of the bylaw provides for the maximum allowance of one livestock unit per usable acre of land that is fenced and dedicated to the keeping of livestock. Section 96.10c of the bylaw specifies that any shelter or other containment, feeding, handling, and associated facilities shall be set back a minimum of 246 feet or 75 meters from any residence unless the residence is associated with the operation. Section 96.11 defines one livestock unit is equivalent to two swine and livestock under six months of age being the offspring of animals kept on the subject property shall not be counted toward the allowable livestock limit. This is an existing operation. A site inspection was conducted on November 30th and determined the existing swine operation consists of, we had at that time um, counted 21 swine, but the applicant has notified me that this is actually 16 adult swine and the uh, remaining uh, swine are under six months of age. Say that number again, sorry, I just said 15. 16 adults? Yes, and then the balance are under the uh, six months of age. The fenced area designated for the keeping of livestock was identified as 1.2 acres and an additional grazing area for seasonal use of 0 0.6 acres for a total containment area of 1.8 acres. Pursuant to the land use bylaw, the maximum allowable unit on the 1.8 acre parcel is four swine and offspring less than four months of age. The closest residence not associated with the operation is located approximately 180 meters or 590 feet from the containment area. The applicant owns the adjacent vacant property located between the agricultural operation and the nearest residence. Development authorities' discretion for lesser restrictions. Section 9612 of the bylaw enables the development authority the discretion to approve a development permit for the keeping of livestock with lesser restrictions if it is of the opinion that the parcel size and location is suitable for the proposed use or development and the proposed use or development shall not detrimentally affect the amenities of neighboring properties. So I would just like to verify if the caller on the line is this, uh, the applicant of this application. So 4300340, um, is, you recognize that number? Yeah, that's me. Okay. 
Danielle? Danielle? Yeah. Oh. Um, and that's good. You can hear us and we can hear you. That's uh, technology is improving. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> just some questions. We're going to go first, uh, I think, through to Jacinta. Can you help me out with the math here? I know you went through it very quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so I, I, I'm what I understand this to be is one livestock unit um, and can be um, or equivalent unit um, to two swine livestock units, so six months of age. And we've got, we're, we've got five and a little bit of acres, but we have 16 critters, adult critters. Is that too many for what we have here? Well, the model provides for two uh, swine, which is equivalent to one livestock for usable acres. So they could have up to 20, right? Up to four adults, right? Yes. So uh, a couple of distinctions, if I can. First, there's, there's sort of two classifications in our land use by law for CRA, to, uh, for CRA um, livestock. So there's permitted use, or it wouldn't become before you. And that's where these livestock unit uh, numbers are significant. If it's above that, it comes to discretionary use and has to come to you. And the other part of that is that it's not about the acreage of the site, it's about the acreage of the uh, uh, land that is dedicated to the keeping of the livestock. So you have two swine per acre, yeah, two swine per acre of uh, land that's dedicated to the keeping of those swine. So that's permitted. That would be a permitted use, and that would never come to you. So if they had, that's why they were more or less. You wouldn't see it. Okay, that's why I was. I was a little bit confused when I saw this because I'll be honest. Been here a long time, and this is the first time that I'm seeing this. Okay, maybe the second time. Um. <laughs> um so <laughs> this is a permitted use. But, um, if they didn't want any any questions on this, they could have four pigs and the, the babies go with them and it would be done. Right? Right. right. What we are looking at is 16, so four times the amount, and then the offspring thereof is... Not counted towards the total livestock per minute. Okay. okay. Um, is, is that clear to our board members? Okay. Daniel? Can, um, would you like to make a comment on this and give us a little bit of history or, or background? What you're thinking? Um, so, basically, for one, I was confused when we moved there about, like, the whole discretionary use thing. Um, we talked to the neighbors when we moved here, and they asked to keep them off of the the vacant property so instead of fencing that off which would allow me to have that quantity um but then it would keep them closer to their property we agree that if they if we kept them on the south side of our property which is then technically over the pigs per acre um that they would be okay with that okay. so what i'm Basically, what I what I'm asking is to have the number of pigs I'm allowed for our because we have ten acres of property, um, but keeping them on just our our south part of our property so that is not imposing on my neighbors. Okay, um, the vacant parcel would remain as a, a buffer then, essentially. Exactly. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Um, how, how big is that other acreage? It's another five acres. It's another five acres. So I'm just trying, I, I'll be honest, I'm trying to do the math and I'm, I'm having, okay, so if it was a permitted permit on 10 acres, they could have 20 pigs with offspring, correct? If the full 10 acres was dedicated yes. to the other yes. Does it matter that they're under two different property types? Yeah. It does matter in that sense as well. Okay. Okay. Well, to the board, what's your flavor? Go. We do have uh, some submissions in opposition. Okay. So I'd just like to present those. And um, the beginning is just 
basically what we're discussing today. So we object to lesser restrictions based on the following. When we purchased our property seven years ago, we did so knowing there wouldn't be excess livestock on or adjacent to the property. This new proposal undermines our amenities we previously enjoyed. The smell of the pigs is already present and as more time goes by, it will increase. We want to be able to go outside and open our windows without having to smell pig feces. If the number of pigs is increased, this will be a constant state. There is also growing concerns as to the enjoyment of our property. We already hear the livestock squealing more often than not. And with the consideration of a bigger operation than what is stated in the land use bylaw, it will and already does affect our amenities. Another big concern is the devaluation of our property. This will make it a lot harder to sell our land for an equitable asking price with the increased livestock presence, smell, and noise. In conclusion, the proposal seemed to be in the direct contravention of the existing principles as stated, where the result will unduly interfere with the amenities of the neighboring properties or materially interfere with or affect the use, enjoyment, or value of neighboring parcels of land. We don't want this to get to a point where we can't get along with our neighbors. We do understand that they have a business and we will support them if they stay within the limits that are currently allowed in the land use bylaws. An increase in the number is not acceptable to us. Dylan and Chantel Spring, uh, Shinwick. We also have another letter that was submitted. Uh, in view of the fact that it is understanding that your committee will be dealing with this application, I would like to make you aware of the fact that an adjacent landowner I strenuously object to this application. The operation in question is located approximately 300 yards from my front door. I have had company already that have made mention of both the smell and the sound emanating from said operation. When the prevailing wind is out of the south, the odor is quite powerful. I admire the entrepreneurship spirit of the applicant, but an acreage with adjacent dwellings is not the place for a pork operation. I am not adverse to cattle or horses, but a pork operation is a whole different ballgame. My primary concern is the negative impact that this operation will have on the value of my property. I have consulted a real estate agent in this regard respecting valuation, and his response it is it would be huge. I have made the applicants aware of my concern in this regard when I first became aware of their intentions, but that has obviously not altered their plans. I trust this correspondence will be conveyed to your committee and be given due consideration. Gary Willeman. Thank you for that. Mr. Clark, I saw you had your name up your hand up. Yes, I did have my hand up and hearing that from neighbors of looking at a map and living beside a, a hamlet now as well as a village. Um, I think that the that intensity of livestock next to neighbors is too high. I know when we're looking through Gatsby as a village, I have uh, three quarters sections of land that surround that, and I was subject to not being able to have any things associated as an intense livestock operation, which I could be a half mile away. So I do think, especially after hearing these letters, that uh, the neighbors aren't in agreement to this, and, and if it was going to go to that other five acres, there'd probably be a real dispute on that too. So I, I I feel for the people out there, I feel for the people that are, have their setup, but I wouldn't want it if it was in my backyard. And I, unfortunately, I, I agree with you immensely on that. The only thing that I, I get back to is this individual also has the right to that bare acre parcel. They could put 10 pigs on there, correct? And without a permit. No, there is a, a distance from the neighbor, 246. Oh, okay. From a neighboring uh, oh. residence, like an, a vacant parcel, fine. But if it, there's a residence there, that's how the bylaw is. Uh, okay. So it would be, need to be 246 feet from that existing residence. But they still could use the whole parcel as part of their application, right? Well, the containment area would need to be 246 feet, I guess. I should specify. That parcel would still be able to carry, you would be able to keep one there. You would decrease the parcel area and therefore the livestock. Oh, you would. Okay. okay. So it wouldn't be so. Okay. Yeah, so it have to be the area uh, that the livestock is confined to. And the livestock has to be set back from that. Uh, 240. Okay. I'm with you on that. 
Okay, but they still could use some of it. If you a good, a good portion. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm not sure which way here. What, um, Mr. Gender? I also find that on say page 62 when it says that the definite uh, section 96.11 that uh, livestock under six months of age from returning to swine, six months of age are grown hog. So they're no longer dependent on say like the, the female pig. And ourselves, we raised for pigs, unfortunately, unfortunately, for a number of years. And yes, like as you raise the hogs, you become accustomed to the scent of it. And it eventually burns, you just get used to it. But as for a neighboring, I'll say neighbor, no, but it is very, I'll just say dissatisfying. So like, I'm not in favor of this. What I'm sure is some of the neighbors in their complaints or, or their letters uh, are, are getting into the, the nuisance by law aspect. And if we were to approve this as discretionary, we're opening ourselves up to something that is incredibly difficult to enforce when it comes to, to noise and smell. Yes, it exists in our bylaw, but are we creating a situation? They, they've already expressed that that's their concern. And I would be surprised if, by the sounds of these letters, if the neighbor went there, are we creating a situation where it's going to be a very difficult enforcement if we, if we were to, uh, Approval of the <clears throat> discretionary use. Mr. Grover, as the board member from the area, do you have anything to say? Uh, I, I went up and seen this here. And yeah, it would be value that my other property is pretty bad. Uh, you know, if they had three or four or a couple of cells there, it wouldn't be a big thing, but that's quite a hurt. That one, five acres or even 10 acres. And uh, yeah. No, so the, the other ones there should have the right to go and have a barbecue if they want. And, you know, uh, I, 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 I know how they like to raise pigs, but uh, at the end of the day, I'll be voting against it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Stolberg. Uh, a question to administration. I know they permitted you would keep it uh, for head. Um, but the discretionary use, is there a cap on that as well? Or is that just any number to be approved discretionary by this board? Or uh, Our bylaw does give the uh, development authority the discretion to allow more. But uh, the, cap, the, the numbers that are provided is the guidelines for the size parcel. So, and yes, I guess to answer your question, there is a cap. We could approve whatever you need. Okay. To be appropriate for the size and okay. area. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I chime in one more time? Yes, you may. So, um, I do have 16 adults on my property right now, but in the summer, a group goes to my in laws. So, I have less in the summer, um, but I keep them all on my property for ease of feeding in the, in the winter. Um, I also, I have more than I actually intend to keep right now. I just have a couple of older cows that I'm preparing to call next spring. So I have like a few extra replacements so that I can find good replacements for this spring. So I have no intention of having, like I have 16 right now, but by spring I have, I have no intention of having maybe 12, and that would be the most that I actually plan on having. Unfortunately, Danielle, that still brings you over the limit, and there are reasons that we have limits in place, I guess, and um, we have to draw the line somewhere, so. Um, yeah. I, I know this may be a hardship to you if you had to move the critters, but is it a possibility for you to move them? Not really. Okay. Um, it, that is unfortunate. Would uh, someone here make a motion to move this forward or we'll be on this for... Mr. Grover, would you like to make a motion to deny the... I'll make a motion to move it forward. To deny the uh, discretionary use?
Uh, just to keep in mind, uh, in MEC, typically, if you're going to make a motion to deny, you need to stick reasons. It has to be a positive motion. Uh, in MEC, it doesn't have to be a positive motion, but you need to state reasons for denial. And uh, because that forms part of the appeal mechanism. Right. So, uh, and this is over and above the amount that is, is there. Right. Uh, but you're going to want to look at your discretion, the clause for when you can apply discretion, and a reason why you haven't applied that discretion. Okay. So the reasons stated by our two members right now, number one, um, the ability and the enforcement issue of noise and smell, one of them. Yep. So reasons to neighboring properties. Reasons to neighboring properties and just the sure number over and above what is considered to be discretionary units per acre is just higher than we're willing to accept. If it was one or two pigs over or above, it would be something that's possible, but the sheer number in this case is, it's not um, so one or two. is 200% variance is too much. 200%. There, thank you for that. 200% variance is too much. Mr. Gender. Like in this uh, recommendation, are they going to be allowed that what they are allowed? But they, that's a non, that's a non, that's a permitted use. They could have, in this case, they could have four, four animals with the, the offspring there. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, I have no issues with the motion. I was just wondering if there's any appetite to give them uh, a reasonable time frame to, to downsize. To avoid very good point. Hard. Very good point. What's uh what what does board feel? That would probably be appropriate for a second motion. Okay. But we'll still discuss it right now. So um actually no, you're right. We'll take this motion, we'll do this, and then we'll you can bring that up, Mr. Yeah. Stephen. So Mr. Grover, where we have is you denying it, um, your motion to deny, and with that stating the two reasons, one being that it is a um, it is a hardship on our municipality to enforce the nuisance bylaw, particularly in this case, and to the sheer um, size of the variance being um, 200 percent. Is that good with you? Yeah. Okay, Mr. You have a motion on the floor. So what, what, is the, what is the legal limit that they can have? Four adults. Four adults. Four adults. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah. And that's only on the confined where the pigs are confined. That is, yeah, on their on their that's property. The only acres you can count, right? Yeah, it's on their property. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, a further reason of uh, denying this request would be we've already had two objections to it. We're clear. Okay. All those in favor of this motion? Uh, declining it down to four pages? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And that was carried in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Justin? Uh, well, what is a reasonable time frame? That's the question. So you'd, I'd like to make so you'd like to make the motion that we give them a reasonable time frame to to bring this into compliance. And what is your time frame, Mr. Thirty days. Um, just refer to the applicant. She did indicate that some of the animals would be brought to the to be butchered in the near future. So maybe Danielle, yeah. Danielle could. Can you, Danielle, can you give us a little bit of insight of how long it's going to take you to bring it into compliance? Well, I would still like, uh, sorry, I was getting a lot of the background. <laughs> um, if I fence off though, the rest of that five acres, which I hadn't done, it's going to take me an afternoon and then I can have eight, right? Because I would be closer to four acres. That's what I understand as well. Yeah. And that's without touching the empty, right. the empty lot. It does still require a permit. The permitted use isn't deemed approved. It still requires a permit, but it has a much more limited rate of appeal. It doesn't come through this board. It's just an approval from a development officer. But uh, 
uh, it would be it would allow uh, for every acre you have dedicated to the key vein, you get two spines. So yeah. if you've got four acres, that's eight. If you've got eight acres, that's sixteen. Uh, or, or I like I don't want to fence off the piece in between us and the neighbor because I don't think that's fair. But at the same time, like I feed off of that, and I have everybody's feed ready in the morning, so it might be three minutes of noise in the morning until everybody gets fed, and then the saying of a lazy pig is a true saying. They're like the first one to bed and the last one's up in the morning. So I can't see how there's a lot of noise other than that four minutes when they get fed in the morning. Uh, I'm just trying to like figure out how I can Okay. Uh, like I'm I'm okay with getting rid of some. Okay. Like, but I I like thirty days isn't fair because I have their pregnant right now. <laughs> that's kind of where we're at, Daniel. What how long or will it take you to fare well? They're due in March and I sell all the piglets off the sow. So by you and all have no piglet. Okay, that might be a little long. I'm looking at the board members here. That's a little long time. Okay, well, and I've got a question on that because right now we're showing that we've got, uh, oh, 19, we, with, with 16 adults, but 19 offspring, which as a board member gender is stated from raising hogs that six months is a, is a girl, you know, you're, it's no longer an offspring. So. Yes, they're sold right off the sows. Are, are these ones just wean pigs? Because they wouldn't be fair with my marks on either. So, go ahead, Mr. Gender. Well, I keep a few to raise to butcher to sell the meat too. But they're if they make it that six months, it's definitely not for very long before they go to the butcher. Mr. Gender. The term for, for hogs is three months, three weeks, three days, so about four months. If you take it into March, I believe these sows have been just impregnated. They got exposed the second week of November. So here's our dilemma, gentlemen. You have pregnant animals that you're going to tell to be removed. Are we prepared to do that? Or are we prepared to leave this till March? At which point they can deal with it and go from there. Mr. Clark. Yeah, it's just, I guess, one comment on this. We are winter and early spring months. So, but you start getting into June, July, that's where you're getting it. Or June, yeah, you're getting windows open. You're getting more for the smell, more for the noise. So. Would you be okay with the end of March, Mr. Clark? Yeah, it would be a whole, yeah, it would be it's correct, but it's good for you. Okay, Mr. I'm just doing a straw poll here, Mr. Gender. Are you okay with March being our timeline? Like with some of these hogs, are they ready for market? Not just counting, say, like your right name is ours. I have. Twelve thousand that will be farrowing out in the spring, and I have three boars. Okay. Three boars may have to get moved sooner than later. Mister, are you, Mister Gender, are you okay with March? Okay. Mister K. Okay. Mister Stevens, since it's your motion, are you okay with it being March? I am fine with that as my motion. Yeah. And Mister Stolberg. Well, you know, because winter months uh, tends to freeze it and. Um, it helps a little with the smells. I, and Mr. Grover, are you okay with March? Well, you're going to pick them. I, I raised pigs before. You're going to pick them out in March. Maybe five, six weeks before you can wean them. We're seeing the end so of March. going to be end of March. Yeah. Maybe way into June or what you got? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really in favor of it. Okay. Um, There's too many there. That's what there. And um, thank you. So, Mr. 
Stevens, are you okay with the end of March being March? What's the last day in March, February 20th? Which one? 31st. 31st, thank I'm you. I'm fine with March 31st. This okay. So the motion will be that we, uh, the, the time limit to bring this into compliance is uh, March 31st. No other questions or concerns? Just to clarify the motion, Mr. Chairman, you're uh, effectively directing administration to send a notice of intent to enforce with the deadline of March 31st, 2022. That is correct. Okay. Uh, administration understands what we're doing. Go ahead, Mr. Okay, I can see where Mr. Grover's going with this. Okay, so they saw South do, I'll say, bring these offspring in, but then it's going to be another two months after that. Actually, but okay, if you do your math, Three, 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 right? November, December, January, February. She should be by the end of March. It should be six weeks old. And they can move on. That's why I, I just did your quick math. But she was saying that it. She was expecting at the end of March for them to be giving birth. But her her math doesn't make it clear. It's full middle of November. Using your math, I've come to. They're going to be leaving by the end of March. Okay. Um. Just. In regards to, they should be, they should be farrowing with like the first two weeks of March. Maybe in January or in December. We, at a certain point, we have to draw the line. We can't keep kicking this road, can down the road because I'm assuming the breeding stock will be bred shortly thereafter. Uh, I mean, we are giving. A fair, fair bit of time to find alternatives. Yeah, and that's what that's what this is about. Is she doesn't have to throw them out there. She just has to bring them into compliance by that time. Okay. Keep it self Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we good on this? I love this board. All those in yeah, favor? I, I, oh. I, will, I got one more thing to say. Uh, Mr. Grover, all right. Okay. And I don't have to have a fence around it. That other one has to have a, the right acres so that it would be in, in a plant or in combines by then. And the ground scroll's already, isn't it? But anyhow, carry on. Okay. We're going to call the question. All those in favor? March 31st. Dave, you're opposed or in favor of March 31st? I'm opposed. Okay. You got that, Marlene? One opposed? All in favor. So Chantel, um, unfortunately, maybe didn't go the way you'd like, um, but you can contact Jacinta. She will send a letter out that by March 31st, something has to be done with the pigs. Um, you can talk with Jacinta and find out maybe possibly some alternatives to see what you can do there to bring it into compliance. And uh, like I said, I, I apologize, but that is the, the decision of the board. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You guys are just 6.4. Hey, who's going up? Rich? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the purpose is to consider a discretionary use development permit application of the variance to an RV as dwelling unit in the Hamlet Residential District. The applicant is proposing to install a garden suite <coughs> excuse me, on property by placing an RV on site to be used as a dwelling unit for the landowner's daughter who, due to health concerns, is unable to live on her own. Garden suites are discretionary use in the Hamlet Residential District, and a garden suite is defined in the County of Stafford Land Use Bylaw as a dwelling unit used as a temporary additional dwelling for sole occupancy by dependents or partly dependent parents, grandparents, or handicapped at all children of the occupants of the primary dwelling on that parcel. An RV as a dwelling unit is not a permitted or discretionary use in the Hamlet Residential District. Section 23.1 of the County Land Use Bylaw states that Development Authority may decide on a development permit application, even though the proposed development does not comply with this bylaw or is a non conforming building or use, if, in the opinion of the Municipal Planning Commission, the proposed development would not duly interfere with the amenities of the neighborhood or materially interfere with or affect the use of enjoyment or value of neighboring parcels of land and 
the proposed development conforms to use prescribed for the land in this bylaw. The proposed development will meet all the required setbacks and utilities will be provided by connecting to the existing utilities already in use on the property. Access will be via the existing approach onto Highway 35. No new access will be needed. Alberta Transportation has indicated that they have no issue or will not need an approval through the department as the use is temporary and it is an RV and not a fixed structure. And that completes my report. Okay. Ms. Um, Lewis, are you you're here? Yes, I am. Um, if you want to come to the mic and just, uh, like I said, we don't have to um, allow anybody to speak, but we do because we seem to be nice. You are very nice. Thank you. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about what's going on, please. Well, in 2014, I came home to take care of my parents. My mother passed away in 2016, and my father got sick, and he got a lot better. I got sick, and now he's remarried. So I have been looking for a place to live, and being on a fixed income, with rent being so high, this would enable me to stay in the same area, but also be able to afford my place as as a residence, and have my own uh, have my own accommodations, and that of and that of a little a little Pomeranian dog. Your dog's name? Uh, I don't think we need to uh, say the dog's name. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is <PG>. <laughs> <laughs> We had a little insight on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, okay, we'll try and keep things light. Uh, Mr. Stevens, would you like to make motion? Uh, I would like to make motion. I do have one question for uh, our development officer, though. Um, is it possible that we approve this, but it doesn't become a permanent? Thing in the sense that if these landowners were to sell, then it's back to business as normal and it is a permanent discretionary use on this lot. Yeah, the, the whole definition of the garden suite is basically a temporary use specific to this purpose. And if anything happens, um, without getting into urban, but any, any of the situation changes and this development permit no longer exists, and that RV is now has to go. Uh, okay, I will make the motion that we approve this discretionary use. And a little bit of backstory: uh, I went out, visited with the applicant and the neighbors. This is a very large uh, lot with very mature shelter built. The aesthetics is very limited in that sense. You'll notice that uh, the applicant is along the uh, south boundary or very close to. I met with that neighbor as well. They have zero concerns with this, so I think a lot of a lot of the side effects are, are very mitigated on this one. So I will move that uh, we allow accept the discretionary use on this one. Okay. Um, are there any other questions or concerns, Mr. Grover? I'm in favor. Okay, so um, since he's in favor, I'll call the question. All those in favor? That is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. Hey. Are we going, we're going to skip to the subdivision file? Yes, please. Okay, 7.1. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, this is going to be one of the little more complex subdivisions you've had a chance to see in the last uh, six months or so, so I do intend to go slow. I do want to point out that uh, Jerry Lee, directly behind me, is the applicant in the room with us. And uh, Andrew, I'm not sure if we can, yeah, if we could kind of shrink the image so we can see as much of the, uh, the uh, pictures as possible. Uh, I want to start with Appendix A, and I appreciate member of the report for the viewing public and for the members of council. Or at NPC, we'll just walk through some items. Uh, so we are dealing with the second parcel of the quarter section. Uh, we're just to the west of Highway 56, south of uh, Township Road 41-2. The first parcel that came out of this quarter section, you can see it in the upper right where the orange boundary goes around. 
And the second parcel that is uh, part of this application is proposed to be in the upper left. You can see the odd shape uh, with the purple outline, approximately 3.63 acres in that general vicinity. So the issue, the biggest issue that I'm going to be addressing as we go through is the issue of environmental reserve dedication. And that only arises when we're dealing with the second parcel of the water section. First parcel out, uh, this government act does not allow the municipality to take environmental reserve. But by the time we get into the second, third, fourth, fifth parcels, that's when the MVP policies, the MGA requirements, or ability to take yard starts kicking in. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so you can see on this parcel, actually, it's probably very typical of some of the land up in that area, uh, a little bit of hillocky, uh, hummocky area, and uh, quite a few wetlands uh, uh, sprinkled throughout. So we can go to the other one that we marked up. I'm going to walk us through some of the, the key issues that with this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, make sure that we're giving a chance to have respond to some of the comments as well, Mr. Chairman. So uh, we're up in the northwest corner of the water section, and the purple outline is a little thinner, but you can see it generally speaking following the outer edge of the wetland area. And that raises one of our first issues. The, uh, the intent of the proposed parcel boundary would not to be to encompass any of what's called the bed and shore of the wetland of the water body itself. Uh, the applicant was asked to do a wetland impact assessment. A disc study was provided to confirm that, yes, this is very much considered a wetland under Alberta uh, provincial policy. And yes, we would actually have to confirm the bed and shore to make sure that it stays outside the parcel boundaries. Uh, so what that would mean is that if approved and if the moving ahead with registration, a uh, Alberta Lancer there would have to go for what's called a traverse or a walk around the edge. And it's not necessarily following the edge of the water. It's following where the vegetation shifts from being having a riparian nature to an upland nature. So sometimes it's close to the water's edge, sometimes it's a couple of feet or even several meters further back. So that's something that the surveyor would uh, do under the guidance of the Surveys Act. Uh, in our particular application, trying to fit that with the county's planning bylaw, that means our 3.63 acres that we have to work with, where the minimum parcel requirements, three acres, may be getting a little shaped down. So we have that as first issue to consider. The second issue I'm going to jump to is along Township Road 41 2. Uh, in that particular road, there's a 20 meter wide right away, and the county policy is when subdivision occurs. We try to increase that to 30 meters. Uh, so that 10 meter difference is split equally between north and south. In some case, you have both sides of the road, which translates to that uh, very long number with four digits past the decimal, or approximately, I'm going to call it five meters. We'd have to come off uh, the property along the entire water section, except the quarter uh, parcel already exists in the east, northeast corner, along the entire water section length along uh, Township Road 41 2. What that does for our parcel size going across here means the purple line that you see on the top of the screen, we would come south of that line five meters, and we may be shaving off another 0.5 to 6 acres of size in that particular uh, circumstance. So we're getting a little closer to that three, three acres. So depending on how the survey comes, surveyor comes, or comes out, and with that uh, road widening, we may be very, very close to the three acre mark. Or we think it will be very close to the three acre, acre mark. Uh, so some of the other issues that you can see, and Andrew, before I get into those, can I just quickly jump to the photos, the on-site photos uh, in particular? It's actually that one, which can go back to one more page. Let's scroll down. Yeah, the third one on the bottom is one I wish to bring uh, the Commission's attention to. Uh, so the, looking at the air photo is one thing. It gives you a sense, but it still looks pretty flat, even if when we put the contours on. If you're not familiar with 3D contours, you don't get a sense of that. So this photo is uh, looking through the proposed subdivision, we're up in the north, what would be the northwest corner by the access point, looking across that kind of Florida Pana handle area that was up in the other drawings. And you can see it's kind of up on a, a hill surrounded on the other side would be the rest of the wetland with a little bit of a bowl shape in the middle. And maybe Andrew can go to the next page, take a look at the photos, a good a little perspective. The photo four, we're looking from a different perspective from the, uh, the northeast, looking towards the southwest. So looking at the wetland on the other side, it wasn't shown in the other photo, you can still see that upper uh, point in the middle, and then uh, the lower photo with all the level lovely people posing in it uh, is uh, showing some markings in the real world. So on the right hand, we have the uh, gentleman named Randy, I believe, who is standing approximately where the vegetation seemed to be changing from riparian upland, so that it's not right at the water's edge. And I'm holding in yellow the other end of the tape, only 20 meters out. And I'm, holding, I'm pretty much up to the top of the hill, and you can see what's happening with the vegetation on site. And that's pretty characteristic going around that immense panhandle until you get to the east side and show up to the 
So if we go back to the other Air Force Center for a second. Uh, so where do, what does that relate to? That relates to the red dash line you can see being drawn into the middle of the parcel, you know, for kind of a Florida panhandle type uh, setup. What that means is when we apply the county's policy for environmental reserve dedication, we come back from where we think the edge of the environmental reserve edge of the wetland would be by 30 meters, 100 feet. And if that area has environmental reserve uh, would go one of two ways. If it's dedicated as land to the county, then the county owns and manages it and definitely doesn't have a significant impact on our parcel size. If it's dedicated to what's called environmental reserve, like easement, that means the property owner still owns it, but they have to leave that area in its natural state. Its natural state is relative, as you can see in the other photos, it's, it's agricultural land, it's been heat, it's been cropped quite a few times. Some of it's very natural, the occasional tree, but the vast majority of this is largely uh, uh, agricultural uh, cropland. Uh, so the 30 meters distance measuring in leaves in the between it the line that panhandle area approximately 100 feet across i think at the narrowest point and then length is a couple hundred now what that means is if you are trying to build something on the site to be able to stay out of the environmental reserve easement area that's a choice of mission and also look ahead to the development permit stage line is probably require similar setbacks of 30 meters where if i put the house and do we still have a buildable area to be able to work with this, or are we creating a parcel that no one could work? Uh, so in our assessment, that red area is probably down to the very, very minimum of what would be considered workable. 100 feet across by 100 feet across is 10,000 square feet. So that means there's 10,000 square foot blocks within which you can do a three-car garage, a ranch-style house, and all your improvements like the driveway, a little bit of walkway. Uh, you couldn't have a typical mode on environmental reserve area, but your yards and setbacks would usually apply would also overlap our area. So is there a buildable area in there to place a house? Our assessment is the answer, yes. So we have to go through the same exercise for water and wastewater systems. Water, not so much. The well is pretty flexible. Uh, but the wastewater system, to meet the private sewage uh, disposal requirement, you have to be set back from property lines, and you have to also be set back from edges of water bodies and wetlands by about 30 meters. Uh, and which is the biggest case, and this will very much limit the range of technology that could be used in the property. Certainly, it will not be open discharge. That requires 10 acres of land. Shouldn't be anywhere near a water body, but it does happen. Uh, even a field system, uh, you probably have to put that area in the north end of the Panhandle, pretty close to Township Road 41 2, and hope that the local soil conditions are suitable for that particular system. The backup plan would be a fully enclosed holding tank. It would require a constant pump out and haul it to a facility like Red Bull. So uh, from that perspective, is there ability to place somewhere on the property with the proposed parcel a, a system that meets the private sewage regulation? Yes, it is. Uh, the back plan will be the most expensive one going. Uh, the last item, or maybe one of the last items, uh, you can see at various points uh, that small hill I was mentioning, we've marked the slopes using uh, calculations of the contour information that's available through the county's uh, GIS. I think with those, we can point them more forward. Yep. Um, so we have to interpret these with a bit of grain of salt, especially when you see a straight line going through a water body. They're a good indication of what's happening on the ground. If a surveyor was to go out there and do a true field survey, of picking up points every three meters, they would probably come back with a slightly different map than what we're showing, unless for our purposes, it's good enough to indicate the fact that we do have some slope issues that will have to be contended with. And some of the runs uh, in some cases, like for instance, a 14.4 percent down towards the southwest corner of that peninsula, that's below the 15 percent mark, so we're not that concerned. In other cases, it may be higher than 15 percent, but they're not quite over the four meter mark. It's over the three meters that we mentioned for not requiring a geotechnical. So, what may be waiting for the applicants later on is not to say that the slopes are completely unworkable, but the development authority may require at least the preliminary assessment by a uh, geoscientist or an engineer indicating that, yes, I think this, the slopes are manageable uh, and that we don't have to do a full uh, geotechnical study. So we try to take that into account as well. You can try, again, it kind of pushes you into that red area that we've identified as a buildable space where you probably could still meet that, uh, that requirement. At the time of subdivision, we can't, even though you're the exact same group that we deal with it, we can't presuppose or count on any variance or relaxations based on application that you would get to see come before you. 
So that way we, we do have to evaluate this in a worst case scenario on those that max would die. And the big question time of subdivision, are we still creating a buildable parcel that someone has a chance of working on? Uh, maybe the, this is the last point, Mr. Chairman, where I speak to some of the options. There is uh, in the reports a discussion about which there's two access points that probably could work. Uh, the applicant was intending to use the existing agricultural access point, which is in the very northeast sort of west corner. And come, kind of coming in and along, well, actually, you can almost see the tracks of the equipment basically following that uh, along the contours. The other is roughly where you see the 493 mark uh, for the dimensions, the clearing of the trees there, and operations have indicated that that too would be an acceptable location. So there is a condition attached to the approval of the NPCs uh, prepared to grant approval that, that basically does point that out. Uh, we do need to look, are looking for an approach upgrade, and it could be a relocation to that uh, clearing area as well. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, the recommendation is, uh, unfortunately, to, based on the MDP policies, uh, which don't seem to give us any latitude on the width of the environmental reserve, uh, is to grant approval subject to having environmental reserve easement, so that'd be a legal binding document, register a title that says you have to leave that 30 meter area around shown between the red and the purple in its natural state. So no houses, no fencing, no mowing, no pesticides, manicure, let it go back to nature, the house and all the other men, you can still walk in it, you can dog run it, but you can't do any improvements in it. Um, and uh, the development would have to be restricted to that red narrow area with the middle of the uh, it's mostly, a, it's not a lot of conditions attached to that one, but significant enough. And then you have to field any questions. Mr. So um, I just have a quick question about that. Now, if we didn't take the road widening, um, can we go back to the map, Andrew, where we, and yeah, right, no, nope, back there. So if we didn't take the road widening and on the original parcel, I take it. It looks as though we didn't do that. I'm not sure when it was divided, but. Um, does that change a little bit? What what does that change for this individual as far as uh, now we'll go back to that other map? It shows that we were basically right. The yellow line is it just is it just the parcel situation? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it, it would uh, basically it comes down to the parcel situation. Yes, yeah, so we wouldn't really complete answer on that. We actually see the survey lines coming up. But it, it would just it would help ease or alleviate that whole three parcel three acre parcel issue that we're working. Okay. Um, Mr. Lewis, do you have something that you would like to? What are your thoughts here? Well, we just thought it was a natural thing. We didn't consider what land is. I mean, we farmed it. We farmed right down to the shore. So I'll be completely honest with you. And, and where I'm at with this one is um, if you were to be the one that was building, there would be a different um, opinion for me versus if you were selling it. Because if you were planning to sell this particular parcel, um, the individual we could may or might be dealing with may not have um, as easy a disposition as yourself. So um, unfortunately, we can't determine who we sell to, right? Um, board members, what are we thinking here? What's your thought? process on this one. There's a lot of glazed looks and I'm just thinking that Greg, you better <laughs> short it over. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. I, I'm certainly glad there were no other things out. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at these lines and, and the mowing piece, all I know is the acreage that is closer to 56. Looks very nice, is a, is a very nice addition to the areas. It, uh, but this does put a whole new definition on subdivisions when you start looking with this environmental reserves and a slew. So, and I'll be honest, my when what came to first to my mind was if we left it in a um, in a natural state, if I'm building my house inside that red and everything outside the red is three feet of grass, um, I wouldn't let anybody smoke out my back door. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it still, if you look at the fact that if there's no trees there, the pasture land, or it's cropland there, or, or hayland there, why could it not be mowed? That's, that, I'm with you on that. 
I don't put buildings, etc. on it, but it could be part of the lawn or part of the that property. And I guess I guess we said no fences, so mm -hmm. it would have to be pulled if that was the case. Go ahead, Mr. Stevens. Uh, I have a feeling I know the answer to this question, but I have to ask anyway. There's no way to take cash in lieu of reserve because, like that, this seems. I agree with the applicant. It seems like Mother Nature's already subdivided this. It's pretty fragmented already. So, I guess. Sure, I'm gonna use it to segue into a more of a broader conversation. All right. <laughs> I apologize if it actually. Please ask your questions about it too quickly. The options topics. So we, we've assessed the MD, the application coordinate policies the MDP. Yeah. And the short answer to your question: there is some cash in lieu with reserve, but that's for municipal school and MSR school park reserve, not environmental reserve. Environmental reserve is meant to deal with uh, areas that should be developed or hazardous lands or a buffer around the natural feature that due to pollution or the desire to facilitate public access. The municipality wishes to take land for the for those purposes without compensating the land. So there's no cash in the equivalent for environmental reserve. The legislation though gives broader um, latitude for municipalities than what you've chosen for yourself as a county through your municipal power. So the legislation, despite what Alberta Environment and Parks may tell you in all the correspondence, starts with environmental reserve is a discretionary decision. You can choose to take it or you can choose not to take it. And then it goes on beyond that point on if you choose to take it, here are the kind of lands that have to be have, has to be to qualify. And here's also what you can do with it, which does mean leaving the natural state, not wanting it, not treating it. You can treat it as a public park, but very few people wish to build a public park in their, in their, in their, own, their own land, their own time. The other issue I should point out about environmental reserve easement is it shuts out public access to this land. So it's deprived of the land. That's what it's a key distinction between dedication of the environmental reserve as land versus environmental reserve as an easement. So if you take an easement, you can, it's supposed to be for the same purpose of leaving it to natural state, even if it was previously hay. The other uh, MGA starting point is if you choose to take MS4 reserve, the minimal distance is six meters. So that means if I chose not to take it, okay, that's it. There's no distance. If I chose to take it, I have to be at least six. Now, if I'm following a sergeant or that riparian vegetation and it's some cut the point that juts out it's eight meters wide instead of six, it still meets minimum requirements of legislation. In the collection of policies we put in the report on purpose, you can see in your MDP, it doesn't say that, it doesn't give you that broad line. It's the MDP has said we're going to take it, it's going to be 30 meters. Unless, yeah, unless, unless an environmental expert comes back and says in this particular case, we're prepared to justify that you can take something less. <clears throat> and unfortunately, after what the applicant had already spent on the desktop, they basically came back and said stick with 30. At it's the bad time of year to do another ten thousand dollars of work to come back with an answer that may say the exact same thing. Stick to thirty. Uh, so my my broad aside is just you know is very much so this the question of environmental reserve is self-imposed one uh, on in your MDP. Unfortunately, at the time of subdivision, as subdivision authority, you know, so as council, uh, you must comply with your MDP, your statutory bond policy, and that's what this looks like. And part of the problem of changing that is we change it for one, we change it for all. I mean, the MDP could be changed to allow greater discretion to the Municipal Planning Commission rather than doing away with the requirements entirely. And additionally, you find some of our other statutory plans that are area vote based will have requirements like the whole Lake IEP, for example, would have environmental reserve requirements. Because clearly, Mr. Chair, this is going to come up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> this very typical of the quarter section that are waiting for you. The main problem with this one, the why, the why, the how, and this is kind of the first time we've seen it, it only matters on the second parcel out. And we don't see a whole lot of second parcels out. So that's it. It would have been a different conversation. It would have been, other it would have been vice versa on this one. It would have been an awkwardly so. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Mr. Clerk. Well, my question is, we were talking about road widening, and uh, I have just a question to the applicant. Do you own that quarter section to the north crossroad? No. That's not yours, okay. 
And in this case, I'm not sure I would worry. And I am the king of the world. To where it goes to, I understand that part. I just thought maybe it was a negotiating tool at the end. No, no, I'm, I'm king of road widening no matter what. But in this particular case, if it helped the applicant, I would have been willing yeah. to go a little bit of a... I don't always break, but I do bend. Well, I'm just talking about spending. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be purchasing this pretty property. I do it well, but didn't take the red line. But then... I move outside of that. We're coming and busting your knuckles because you were bad. I'm just going to bend a little bit. Yeah, I know. And that, but that's, it, 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 I, I get it. I know what you're saying. We would probably never enforce because we would never know. But you know, and I know. I come to your house just for a visit, and I see, and I know, and I don't like you, and I'm going to phone up the county, and then the vet's going to have to send out a person, and then she's going to have to send out an officer and they're going to come and talk to you and you're not going to do it and then we're going to have to enforce it. And everybody knows how well we love to enforce here and how cheap it is. Mr. Lewis, where's, where are you at on this? Is this something that is? It's Mr. Lee. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, where are you at on this? All right, is this is, is this something that you is, is this not not no pun intended is the hill you plan to die on on this one is this something that I mean, it's it's a tough tough mm -hmm. it, this one is tough for us yeah well nothing's easy at this point trust us <laughs> go ahead and the applicant's ability to wait and see as well and the other option is that if NBC wants to recommend that council and the MDP um, I mean, it is our intent to bring that forward next year for a significant review. Um, so the timelines are not short by any measure, um, but it could uh, foresee greater discretion of the subdivision authority to vary that amount or to dispense with entirely. Uh, so that's that's sort of the third um, put in abatement type option. You can approve it as of today, and if the applicant never pursues endorsement, and then, you know, waits and sees what happens. And if maybe the MDP doesn't go the way he wants, and then he can get what you see before he's endorsed. He's got a year to do that, I believe. So there's options. So, Mr. Lee, with that, are you, is, is that something you're willing to do? Is it, or is this something that you need to have done no, no, immediately? No. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. Walk through that. Uh, so, if, if you do go ahead and approve it with the condition we put in, uh, we can't just correct that after the MDP has changed. It has to be an application. Mm -hmm. The other option may be at the discretion of the applicant. Uh, if he's willing to give the subdivision approving authority a very, very generous time frame to put this application on the shelf and bring it forward later on, mm -hmm. we follow up with the paperwork with them. So would you understand what we're going to talk about there? It's basically you would, you, it's a, the powers in your hand to put it on hold, see what council does as far as bring back our new MDP that we are planning on working on next um, year, and then go from there. Is that something you're willing to do? Okay, so in this particular case, what I will do, do we want to table this then? Okay, so I will need a motion from someone to table this. Mr. Clark gives a motion to table this. Um, and I'm trusting administration is going to put that in there somewhere where we keep it so we don't forget about it. Okay. Yeah. 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 December of 2023. So 23, 22. 22. Yeah. Craig's got yeah. me going. Yeah. But it might take a whole year. Yeah. So just to get out of 2021. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So any questions or concerns? And I'm seeing none. This is such an easy job. All those in favor? Mr. Grover? In favor. There you go. So thank you for working with us on that. And a very complicated one. Thank you, Craig, for going slow for us. Um, now, it, Annika, are you, are you waiting for something? Did we skip over yep. six more? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. And are you presenting the... I'm presenting the gravel bit. Which one are you presenting? 
6.1. Okay, so we're going to go back up to 6.1, 27 in your package, everybody. It's 27 in your package. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The proposed application is for a gap pit operation that is known as the Libra Action Pit. The development is located 1.2 kilometers west of the village of Big Valley and encompasses an area of 18.2 hectares. The surrounding lands are used for agricultural operations and there are a couple of residences in the vicinity as well. Operations include sand and gravel extraction, aggregate washing and crushing, as well as stockpiling and hauling aggregate off-site. 13.5 hectares of the development area are currently disturbed. The pit is considered both a dry and a wet pit, meaning that extraction occurs above and below the water table. It is estimated that 400 tons of aggregate remain within the development area and will be extracted over the next 15 years. Figure 1, which is under page 42, shows the phasing of the development moving from the east side of the development area to the west side. And it shows that two, er two areas are all already reclaimed and those are within its southeast portions. The land use bylaw requires an expert report on noise and air quality if the gravel pit operations are located within 400 meters of a residence. In this case, there are two residences. One is on the same quarter section in the northeast corner of the quarter, and the second residence is on the adjacent quarter section to the west. Based on the noise measurement tool locations that are shown on page 44 of the package, the modeling predicts residential receptors to be below the permissible noise levels for rural dwellings, and those levels are provided by the Alberta Energy Regulator. Therefore, the operation is not considered to create a significant noise disturbance. And in terms of the air quality, the air quality study indicated that the two residences are well removed from high concentrations of the total suspended particulates. There are no concerns regarding the air quality impacts on these residents due to the operation. The applicant has indicated that a wetland within the development area was disturbed during the construction of the wash ponds, which occurred when material was excavated to create an edge around the wash pond. The applicant has received the, app, the applicable AP approvals regarding the disturbance of the wetland, as well as diversion of the water, and he does not intend to disturb the wetland any further. And the wetland will be reclaimed near the end of the pit life to an area equal to or greater than what was um, there before. There are approximately 3.5 hectares of the development area that have already been reclaimed. The applicant is applying a phased uh, reclamation plan that he's actively working on. The reclamation plan and associated cross sections are located on pages 46 to 48 of your package. The reclaimed lands will be predominantly hayland and pasture, with the exception of the wetland and the dugout, which will remain. And now I just want to go into some of the recommended conditions and highlight a couple of them. Condition three provides an expiry date for the development permit. In this case, we recommend a 10-year permit that will expire in December 2031. The 10-year time frame acknowledges that a complete application requires multiple studies to be completed that are costly as well as time. If they do take time to complete. But it also allows for the assessment of a new application against possible land use bylaw changes in the future. Conditions 5 through 7 are prior to issuance conditions. These conditions need to be satisfied before the actual permit is issued. The conditions require the posting of signage and payment of any outstanding cap levy fees. Condition 9 speaks to a condition that came from the Historical Resource Act approval for the site. They had requested that a historical resource impact assessment was to be conducted at some point during the life of the pit. In this case, it is recommended to require this condition to be satisfied within the first 18 months of issuance of the DP, which would bring us to June or July of 2023. Conditions 9 and 10 ensure that reporting of the pit activity to the county occurs and that the cavity payments are made. Conditions 19 and 20 require the reclamation to be done in accordance with an approved reclamation plan, which can either be the one that was submitted to the county as part of the application or a revised one as approved by the county later on. And the reclamation has to start within 12 months of the pit activity ceasing, and the condition provides a 24-month window within which the reclamation is to be completed. The condition also allows for a possible 12 months month extension to the reclamation period if necessary. 
And that concludes my presentation and the summary of the report. And I do just want to say thank you to the applicant for submitting a thorough application because having all the required documents does make processing the application a lot more efficient. Excellent. Um, I have one question for you. Was the village of Big Gully consulted? We did not send them a referral, but yeah. Was part I, I remember just sent help me out with this. Are we just outside the IDP on this one? Like I, I, I remember they've had some issues in the past of noise and sand and uh, dust. That was the one on the other side of the highway. Okay. <laughs> and we met with the uh, village councillors and I mean uh, this council has changed since then. But the initial application we did set up a meeting. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it would have been, but for original application. Okay. And we haven't had any any concerns. I think it, there was some initial concerns about hours of operations and stuff, and we, we I think addressed that. I'm going to go to Andrew and then you if that's cool. Yeah, there, there was a 24 hour crash that occurred early on in the life of one of those two pits, and uh, that was what the the village raised concerns about that was worked out yeah, with the requirements under this for the seven seven operation that should be proper. Absolutely good. And no road use agreement in this because they use the highway, correct? Okay. Mr. That was the two topics I was gonna bring up was the twenty four hour crushing and the the uh, road use agreement. So. Okay. And Capital is up to date? Yeah, um, I believe yeah they are. Um, I was just looking for that sheet earlier and they they're up to date as quarter three. Perfect. Okay, Mr. Gover. Yeah, I'll make the motion. Uh, yeah, and uh, the village of uh, uh, Big Valley had been consulted when they first started there, they had to, and their concerns were satisfied. And I have one other question: Is time limit? I'm just looking at how long are we permitting for? And yeah. okay, so it's similar to what we've done in the past. Okay, we're moving that direction. That's good. Go ahead, Jacinta. Just uh, for number 11, the annual reports, uh, we are going to move towards having all the uh, reports due by December 31st. Okay. I'm wondering if we could add that to the condition that the report be provided by December 31st. So that are you okay with that, Mr. Grover, adding to your motion that the condition yep. reports yep. be provided? You bet, but we're on. Okay. Any other questions, concerns from the board? I'm seeing none. I'll call the question. All those in favor? That is carried unanimously. In favor. Okay. Thank you very much. Hold well on. Um, are you guys here for anything else? Okay. You don't. You don't. I was just going to say if you didn't. If you didn't want to stick around and. Okay. Uh, Rich, you wanted to take my spot here, and I bet I could meet with you guys about. Uh, the rest while we conclude reports. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go on with the development officer's report what you guys are doing the switching and changing. Go ahead and just send us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Page three of the packet. So uh, for twenty we're just comparing from previous year twenty twenty we had issued seventy nine permits by uh, November thirtieth and at this I'm, uh, this year we've issued uh, 133, so we've seen a substantial increase throughout the year. In uh, 2020, we had 19 subdivisions, and we are now at uh, 23. And we've worked with the Roshan Saskatoon Community Association, as you know, to gather uh, information about the docks and lifts stored on the environmental reserve, and they have compiled a report that they've uh, made access to us through a Google Drive, where all the liability insurance, all the documents are saved in this drive. I didn't print it all off. It's 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 very it's a very large document, but we have all the insurance have been collected. They've done a tremendous uh, job by getting everything in. So very appreciative of their uh, approach and cooperation and getting this. Is what we have a number of years addressed. So that's all. There was some. Was sorry. there one road one up there one that didn't belong to the association? Pardon me. Mr. Gro or Mr. Gender, go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. Was there one road um, occupant up there? 
did not belong to the <clears throat> association, but he went and put it on to the environmental reserve. I think we, yeah, we um, we talked about that one that didn't want to be part of the association, but then we were working on enforcement on that the last time. Yeah, we did uh, receive the application for the one applicant. Uh, they haven't, we still haven't issued the permit. We're just waiting. But they have applied separately, not through the association. And we brought it, we brought it to the board uh, last month. So they, they do not have a permit at this time. We have not. Uh, but they're putting the horse before the car? Yes. Well, the, the dock was stored as it had been a number of years in the same location. Okay, Mr. So they they indicated that they wanted to apply on their own. We brought the application forward, and when I contacted them for payment, um, at that time they told me that, well, now we're not interested in applying for a permit, and, and indicated that their property had already been removed. But when we did the inspection, their property is still either on our ER or the province's ER. <laughs> It's still done on the lakefront. So, and I haven't been back up since, so I'm not so sure. Are we moved on having it removed? Where are we at on that? We haven't been back I get to check to see. Check I haven't been in contact with them. I haven't done a are we further sure that's inspection. The yes. Yeah, when I questioned them, because I called them, that's actually why I contacted them um, after we did that inspection. I called them and said, I thought you're who had removed your property and um, at that time indicated well, it's not on your property, what's the matter? Okay. Um, so are we we're moving forward on enforcement on that? We're, yeah, we're going to have to go back and check to see if it's been removed or required payment in order to see the permit. Or yeah. have it removed. Or have it removed, yeah. I, I think you guys can move on that. Did you need a motion to, to make that happen? I don't think we do. I mean, We've already approved the, to have the item stored. Yeah. So, in order to get the permit, they just need to provide the payment. Yeah. Yeah. And I had asked. Or if they don't, we gotta. Yeah, exactly. Call. Yeah. And I had asked to see if we could waive it just until it, and it was approved to waive it until after MPC had reviewed the application. But now payment is required. So. Okay. Fair enough, Mr. Gender. Go ahead. So, I see you didn't show it until it snowed, then we're in jail. Even if it did. Just leave it in your record. Problem I see. Problem I see is that it's still not working. Oh. Green light when you speak into it. It is. It's working time. Okay. Problem I see. Someone's going to wait until it snows. Then we can't remove it. I'm, I'm with you on that. That's why I said we need to move on enforcement. Either we get payment or we move it forward. So. Okay. Um, any other questions on the bill or comments? I just, I'd like to make one comment. I, I, the development uh, report in Erskine, Les and I had an opportunity to, um, send a picture to Rich if he wants to. Can you bring that up? So just moving on that development in Erskine, um, we sold that lot in Erskine and then they moved the house in. I don't know if everybody got a chance to see it, but uh, can you bring it up? Sure. Maybe. <laughs> so that was quite a quick turnaround, if I may add. I mean, we just recently sold the lots in Erskine, and, and there's already a new home on it, so that was nice to see. And that's, it looks like a nice size to them. We cut all the data, the two lots for the yeah. lots, so it makes it very large. So when did we, when will we start getting um, taxes on this particular? I'm understanding if the, it is on the site by December 31st. Yeah. Okay. Now then, yes, it would be assessed for this year. Actually, looks really good. I drove right. last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a nice. Some landscaping to be done in the spring, but uh, no, they they moved quickly. Okay. Any, any other questions of, that we have? Okay. Um, we're just waiting for you to maybe get it up. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's yeah. figuring this out. Did you, did you get us off? Did you shut us off of the? I it actually wasn't recording. Uh, Andrew said there was an issue. Okay, fair enough. I'll just take a two second break here. We'll... Not that it's a big deal, but it's kind of nice to see when we have additions that are going to be like to 
see them go boom. Especially so quickly. I mean, yeah. I thought that was pretty good. Well, yeah. yeah. Or, or the whole page. But sometimes when people sit on the for a yeah. two years, so they put it on a page. No. They throw the piles. And, uh, I don't know. Oh, man. Eight uh, years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. That's all right. We'll we'll get that team. We we'll, we can send it to you via email and and go that route. And if you would like to see those types of developments, we can certainly include those. We, yeah. We're out, uh, you know, we're out regularly. We can take pictures. Yeah, that's good. Something you would like to have pictures yeah. of? Or? I think it's it's yeah. nice to see. We don't get we, can do that. we don't always or as board members we don't always get to see. Um, everything that's going on throughout the county, and it's nice when we do see it. So. We do take a ton of pictures, we just don't yeah. always include them in our reports. Uh, we have lots of uh, so, pictures. That is our Zoom still up? I'm just wondering if Dave's still there. Dave, can you hear us? Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, so um, I need somebody to receive that. Mr. McKay. Uh, all those in favor? Favor. Report. Larry, you're in favor? Yeah. All right. Okay. Down to 8.1. Thank you for correcting me. I was looking at Lewis and I was talking to Mr. Lee and I was why he called a couple times about yeah. it. I was at the bottom of one and I hadn't moved to the next one. Yeah. So. Right. Can we proceed on the thank you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we have uh, received a referral for a subdivision of a four hectare parcel on the northwest of 2435-14, west of the fourth. It's just on our boundaries with the county of Painters. Um, so just received for comments. Are they going to win turn by now? They haven't indicated it, but it's uh, in some, it's near the gravel pits in that area. So. I, I know we don't really speak about that, but we also talked about ICFs and, and moving forward with if they are going to put wind turbines right on our outer edge, that maybe there should be compensation if our roads are being utilized. But I don't think there's any issue with this. Does anybody have any concerns? Is this in your area, uh, Larry, or? Um, Les, who's his? Yeah, from yeah, the 35, Township 35. I'm in Township 35, so it's got to be adjacent to my area. Okay. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's across, the, it's across the lake on the same road pretty much I am on. Okay. Definitely not a problem. We've got a whole buffer of Sullivan Lake in between. So, there you go. Yes. Do we just acknowledge that we have no concerns? Or, or, yeah. Okay, I'll make that motion that to the county. Uh, reply with um, that we have no concerns on this. All those in favor? There we go. Thank you, David. Next up, um, 8.2, Summer Village. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have also received a referral from the Summer Village of White Sands regarding uh, the separation of a larger lot into two parcels of land. The subject property is within the Buffalo Lake IDP area. And section 3.15 of the Buffalo Lake IDP states an overall average density of approximately 0 0.9 development units per gross acre of each growth node. So this parcel size complies with those provisions. And we have the map at the bottom there just showing how they're intending to separate a large lot into two. Any questions or concerns? Mr. Stober? I have one. Uh, where are the outer development unit count? Um, I don't have a recent uh, calculation of what they have, but I know they are nearing the maximum for development unit. Could we contact them to find out? Is that part of our request and a letter back to them by next week, I guess? Mr. Mr. Clark, that would be yeah. Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wondering with what we've got up at the lake, what are plans for? What are the plans for sewer? 
for that property. And uh, the other thing, the other question I have is the plans are being referred to are from 1980 or 95. And uh, when will we see an updated, like a plan within the last five years, which would be the one we should be seeing would be something very new, but. Okay, so a subdivision or an area structure? Area structure plan. With, and, uh, with things. So do, those two other items that we can add to the letter that we would like to see before they move forward with this is a, the, is a um, updated um, plan. And then also, um, what about sewer? What's happening with the sewer in this particular case? So what are the plans for the sewer? Be again, before this goes ahead, we would like to see this, this happen. So the only possibility for sewer in that location in within the Bottle Lake IEP is a contained holding tank as a, a closer than 800 meters Right. Is there an existing one already in this one? I'm just wondering if I, I, my concern is are they going to try and tear one holding tank for two properties, right? And or it, one, uh, one ground vault, like system. Yeah. So, so what I would just, I, I guess what I was indicating was that we could have that as a requirement that there be a contained holding tank mm -hmm. on the property okay. as rather than inquire because they don't have any other options. Yeah. And what about water? Should we have water and sewer? I don't, I don't know what they do. Do they? Are you gonna, they're not going to drill another well for this property, are they? I don't think they can. I, I don't know. And that isn't something that they're well, That's the question. Should we, we should be asking too what, what are the plans for, for water servicing and sewer servicing for this particular? Any other questions, concerns, Justin? Do you have any? No. Can we throw in our road use agreement? <laughs> Not this one, Dave. Well, they, 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 keep, they keep building up there. Maybe they want to put into that road of ours going there. That'll be part of our ICS, I, ICF yeah, uh, discussion. You can lead that one for us. Go ahead, Mr. Gender. So are they still about the drill wells? I, that's what I don't know. I, I, well, he, uh, no, I don't believe so. No, unless they have a groundwater assessment then. And I don't know if the village have ever done the groundwater because if there's more than six uh, parcels on the quarter section, you are required under the Water Act. So we would like to see water. a groundwater assessment is what we would like to see, or what they're, I mean, they could be using a um, haul in Holding. cistern system, depending, but what are their plans for this? Go ahead, Mr. Clark. We've, we've had the discussion with the ocean about what their plans are with the water system, but Still heard nothing back from White Sand in regards to uh, are they going to ever put a distribution system into water? Or? And this might be the catalyst that starts that, right? When you start doing these subdivisions that we have to ask to the questions. When when is that ship going to sail? Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's why let's do the groundwater. Let's see it. Maybe they've done it. And they, if they do have a groundwater um, study done, we're good. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> I'm just curious, is this strictly a uh, subdivision or are they actually building here at this point? Because I'm just wondering some of the things that we're inquiring about, we may not know if like, if they're subdividing to sell that lot and no one's potentially building at this point. But an area structure plan will tell you, determine to you those particular things. What is the water, what is the water servicing? What is the sewer servicing? What is the density that you have to have in place? No, all that is up to subdivision planning state rates. Or, um, so, yeah. The development stage is where they okay that you have to have this in place, right? So. Anything else that you, anybody has any concerns? So we will formulate a letter and pass it on to them. Okay. I think it has to be by the 14th or something I saw. Yeah, it is very soon. I just... Go go ahead, or maybe sooner. Could we be responding by the next meeting then? Uh, maybe sooner. Yeah, we'll they want to get the subdivision done, I imagine, so they'll have to respond before they get it. Or at least they'll be brought up. Those current concerns will be brought up. And if they don't? They're subject to appeal. Not that we want to go down that road, but... We've never been killed by them. No. Yeah. We're not going down that road. Okay. I'm just looking up the development units so that we have uh, the total sort of white sands. Just 
sorry, I just no, I thought I had it here, but I don't know. I think we would like them to provide us with an updated one because we have a thought one that's a current updated. And I'll be honest, what's happened in the past to the new board members in the past. They've done some subdivisions where we were less than. We, we didn't make any inquiries. We were just you're in your house. You do what you do. Um, and it hasn't affected us, but apparently it has affected us without. There was, I don't know how many laws that went up there that we basically. Previous administration had just said, yeah, go ahead and do it. We don't care. So, um, now we're bringing it to the board so that we can have some input questions that we're being asked by the public, right? Um, nothing else. So you have those, those three items through four water or water sewer. You can have two development units. And then what was the other one like? Or jury starts running. An updated one. Yep. Okay. We need a motion to send that letter. To yes. I'm getting that from you, right? Yeah, I will get what you You got that, Marley? Okay. Um, no other questions or concerns? All those in favor? Favor. Okay. Um, now that we have skipped all the way around, I think we've got everything. No in camera. You guys don't want to tell us anything? No, I'm just wondering if you don't. Okay. We have some uh, compliance issues that we will be bringing forward in a future meeting. Okay, speaking of future meetings, so we have on typically the fourth Wednesday every month, but we have a um, service board meeting or conference. So can, how does 19th work for you of January? January 19th, our next meeting. Yeah. Does that work for you, David? We asked earlier. Oh, Steve, I don't know. Okay, well, you uh, I'm pretty sure you six are good at any. All right, thank you. Anybody else have any conflicts with that? Nothing. Okay. Okay. So we will uh, make the January nineteenth our next meeting. If we just get that into calendars as quick as possible, so it doesn't create. Yeah. Please and thank you. And that's A S B is in the morning. No. Oh. There is no A S B. We have we have that conference. So. Okay. Well. We could have the ASB, but the way we went and talked, he didn't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can double check that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll still go at our one o'clock afternoon on the 19th. Okay. Thank you. Nothing else? Mr. Stevens, adjournment? What's that? No. What do you have on? No. Nope. Oh, I'm just talking to myself. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Favor. Thank you, David. And thank you, administration, for putting up with us. We were all over the last Thank you, you board, for putting up with us all. Thank you. Yeah. Trying to help people out and manage. We don't normally get that many people show up. First, at water boundaries, we did have a previous application. Anderson's, I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want to refer to the name, but south of town, where they sent in the uh, surveyor, sent in the survey through the water boundaries unit and by the time his water had received